prepare for Mr. Reed Shippen. So, oh, you don't think it's real? I'm as real as it gets, man. All right. So if you have questions that you've always wanted to ask, but we're terrified, now's the time. So we'll have an informal hang here. I'm sorry I don't have a keg like we had yesterday. It lasted one hour and cost me uh, 1,300 bucks. So <laughs> it was good. That's true. You guys could just go back and forth. Test check. That'd probably be more fun. <laughs> I already did. I already did. I had to get some special undies yesterday just so it would be a little bit uh, less dynamic. <laughs> you know what would be really interesting is if... How do you turn this mic down? This is too loud. If we could get Carl Tatz into these outfits... <laughs> well, one time we did have a, with my team of guys, we had a battle. It was a rock, paper, scissors, and Javanese. And the loser had to put my leather pants on and go downstairs to the front desk at the, uh, at the Marriott and say he lost his room key. And these were two very large men. <laughs> so, <laughs> we got it on uh, closed caption camera. All right, so Reed shipping here. People can come sit down here and don't have to be all freaked out. All right. And so, Reed, why don't you just uh, toot your horn a little bit? What are you? What have you worked on? What are you working Ooh. on? What do you want to talk about? What have you? Is something exciting you just did that you want to? You want to let us know about? Actually, the most exciting thing that uh, I just did was we just started a charity called Song Farm, that's uh, working with songwriters about going back to their high schools and putting um, songwriting studios, like production, small production studios, in their high schools, like just as a way to give back to kids. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, and that was yeah. you. You contacted me about Glyph and I think they donated something yep. for that project. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Thank you very much. Good. No. Thank, thanks, for, uh, thanks for thinking of us. I can't concentrate with these two staring at me. Yeah, you need. He's telling you you got to eat your mic. I don't know what. I don't know why I'm standing up here talking when Tony Maserati's sitting right there. <laughs> well, we do have Chris Tabron, your old assistant, on later. Yeah. So absolutely. why don't we have both you guys up here? That would be good. <laughs> you won't do it. You don't like his T-shirts. Okay, I got it. I will say this, I was sitting in my studio the other day wishing I had more dangerous liaisons because I, I've, I've got enough gear that I want to switch even more shit around. I understand. I came from Miles Walker's place uh, when we were in Atlanta, and he had just bought three. So he uses one for his vocal chain, one for his drum chain, and one for the total chain. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. Pretty complicated, but pretty cool. I can't wait for the new release that they're definitely going to come out with because it would make. Don't sense. listen to him. I hear this every time. We're going to keep that <laughs> off the air. Hugging control. <laughs> Hugging control. Ah, all right. <laughs> Okay, so how did, how did we hook up? We hooked up because I think I was doing some event in Nashville. I think or it was FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> or Losers Only, maybe in my case. I don't know. Christian Mingle. <laughs> <laughs> so we did, a, we did an event. I guess first time was like at Vintage King or something. I think that's when we first hung out, I, wasn't I it? I think we just, like, Vance and I just kind of took that over and started yakking, right? Like, yeah, it was yeah, good. You know, that's as, as we do. Yeah. Yep. No, I enjoyed that. It was awesome. So, uh, your gateway, your gateway dangerous drug was Monterest tea. Probably. Yeah. I think it started with that and with the uh, the two bus. Okay. So as it usually starts. So talk a little bit about your gateway drugs. Well, I, it's, it's okay. This is right. We're allowed to talk about this kind of thing. We're in a group. It's uh, you know. Uh, almost step. all of my gateway drugs I got directly from Vance Powell. So. <laughs> Uh, you know what, man? Yeah, I, I grew up on the SSL, right? We're huge SSL fans. Like, he's got one, too. And, and um, I was actually working back in the day. Okay, do you remember Tommy's record? Where he wanted, you know, I was working with a client where he loved everything except the low end because getting really extreme low end out of an SSL is a pain in the ass, right? So it was. it's always a fight with an SSL to get the extreme low, I mean, like the R&B low end out of that thing. 
Um, and so I started experimenting with the dangerous thing, thinking, okay, well, what I could do, because I got Pro Tools, is I'll put the stuff through the SSL that I wanted, and then the stuff that I didn't want to have the SSL sound on, or the stuff that I really wanted to pass, like, all of the ultra low end, all of the transits, anything you didn't want the stank on, I would just go through the dangerous. So for a really long time, I've just been mixing with the two bus. The stuff that want, I want SSL on, it goes through that. The stuff that I don't goes through the dangerous. They combine and then go through a bunch of other dangerous stuff. As it happens, it keeps adding on and on and on. Right on. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Yo, Vance, what's up, Dan? Pete. This feels less like an interview and more like a family reunion. <laughs> That's what I was saying. We'll just rotate people up here and get some more mics. Yeah. It'll be more interesting. Oh, no, let's do it. And get some alcohol. All right. <laughs> Actually, I've already had a little bit of that. No, oh, good. I'm, I'm feeling for you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Minor ST. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about why you, you've got an SSL console. Why would you possibly need a Monitor ST with an SSL console? Because the monitoring section in the SSL console blows. And it's always blown, and I've always hated it. So the first thing I wanted to do was bypass it. And Okay, that's pretty clear. Yeah. I think I got that. Next question. <laughs> Next question. You also own some manly gear. I sort of own some manly gear. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Is Ivana still here? <laughs> She's here someplace. Of course I own manly gear. It's the best gear on the planet. Yes, I, I, I own manly gear. I own the 2BQ. I own the Massive Passive. And some some at some point, the Massive Passive made its way into Dan's mastering rack. And it hasn't seemed to have left that yet. Um, but you know what? I, I, can, uh, I can give a quote by proxy about the Massive Passive EQ. I asked... Um, I asked Ted Jensen, you know, if he only had one analog EQ to master with, what would he use? And he's like, massive passive, hands down. Wow, okay, that's pretty strong. Yeah. All right. He's done a few records. Yeah, I, I think. think I recognize his name. It's yeah. like a Transformer, right? Yeah, something you think like People's that. Transformers? Yeah. yeah, okay, right, sure. Awesome. All right, so that's, uh, that's, that's our manly story. <laughs> We're just gonna run. We're just gonna run down the racks. Yeah. Tell one an anecdote, and then we're gonna everybody switch places when I ring the bell. <laughs> you're like, what's that? I've never seen it before. Don't say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you're also you're a dangerous backs guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know, I know, I know, I know the inside story. Who isn't the inside outside story? Backs. Well, story. I, I don't know that I know the inside outside story. Of the, okay. What's the inside outside story? Well, does anybody here not use that? You don't oh, use it. Oh, okay. We got to get you hooked up with one, man. You got to try it. Okay. Yeah. Well, a little bit Put of this, a little bit of that, a little less of that, and you're good. All right? So, just sits there. Yeah, it's the best low end analog get rid of the monkey stuff filter. You know? A little click on the bottom, a little click on the top, sits there. Everything sounds better when it's in than when it's not in, so it stays in. End of story. Huh? So I have a similar situation with my girlfriend. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, most of the front row owns one, so. So, uh, cut filters, you use those at all on the backs, or you just use the... I don't know, do I use a... Do you remember if I use a cut... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you made it. <laughs> so it's on the least amount of cut for 18. Yeah. Okay, 18 Just to hertz. get the, the infrasonic, yeah. the infrasonic garbage out of it. <laughs> and you know it's, and you know it's infrasonic, and of course you do too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, like, especially when you're working in digital, if you want to preserve headroom, you don't need all that garbage. And I certainly don't want to pass it on to these guys for mastering, so psh, it's gone. Kind of sounds like an STD otherwise. Yeah, you know, that could be your next yeah. slogan, you know, stay clean. That's right. <laughs> Unlike this conversation. <laughs> no, you no, know my son, Nico? Have you met him, Reed? No. Uh -huh. yeah, that's hey, Nico, Nico over there. He's What's 17. Yep. Man. Tell him, to, tell him to stoop a little bit so I don't feel so Dude, in the shadow. That's amazing. <laughs> he takes they, good pictures, though. You might be able to use some because that headshot you sent me was like 600K. That's why it's all uh, distorted yeah, up here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing I worry about the least. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll take care of it. Awesome. All right. And uh, you have a compressor, too, as I recall. Well, Dangerous you know compressor. what's weird about it? It's like Dangerous Gear is like rabbits. Like it just keeps multiplying in your chain, you know? And the tough part about this stuff is, and these guys know, you know, like I use my dangerous compressor on every mix. It's moving like a dB tops, right? Really hard to hear, but it's this fantastic glue that I totally miss, you know, when I take it out. So it kind of never goes away. 
do you ever use the the gain makeup in it instead of like doing something in your doll? Like uh, a couple of the guys were mentioning earlier that they actually like they'll set it to like Mike Wells. It's like I put it on one to one, and then I use the gain in. Uh, well, so the thing that's incredibly boring about me is I get a new piece of gear and I mon- monkey around with it and I find something that works and I never touch it again. Like, I don't think I've looked at the settings on that thing in four years. I- I'm, I'm glad that you can be honest. Most people don't. But <laughs> they tell me that about the variable mute, though. That's the one people thing people are honest about. They're like, well, I just used the, the input dual input knob that's it once leave all the other settings the same so more or less iron yeah i mean it's I, i'm sure that it does a lot of cool things but i found the thing that i really liked and it does it really well so i'm not touching it <laughs> that's fine man you got your you got your thing you're good got your flavor all right now do we have some uh, questions from humans out there in the audience we got the you know we got the uh, the hecklers here that are our, our friends anybody else have a question for reed could be about anything why he would hang out with somebody who's wearing an ice cream suit, for example. I've always been impressed with your sartorial kung fu, I have to say. Come on, somebody. You look like you have a question to read. Hi. What, what kind of microphone do you normally use when you're cutting a vocal? I love... If I only had to have one microphone, probably a U67. Um, a lot of times on vocals, I end up starting with either that or one of my U48s, um, and it's it's usually one of those two things. And if it's not that, it's you know, I mean, it's an SM7, right? You're gonna take a hard left turn and go go someplace crazy, but. And so, uh, a question that doesn't involve me or my brands, but have you tried a new U67? Is yours is yours first gen or second gen? Because they had two batches of those. Obviously, they re-released them when they found parts. Mine are old and beat up. Okay. So first gen. So okay. So you haven't tried uh, the new one that they released? I haven't. No. Okay. Yeah, it was interesting because I had a back when I was a, a powerful and influential man as director of sales at Guitar Center when that was uh, still a company. I. Uh, I had, I had dinner with the with the president from Germany, and I said, "Why don't you reissue the U67? I'll buy a thousand from you." You know, and he's like, "It was a long pause." We made a promise to the people when we made the second U67 to never do this again, <laughs> and that's why it's out now. <laughs> I'm sure it's amazing. No, I'm sure it is, yeah. yeah they they make great makes, stuff. Neumann makes great mics. I just, yeah. She actually just took off, but I just learned from a friend of mine, Mara, that the Germans don't have a sense of humor. Did you, did you know that? That's not true. Hmm. A lot of people don't, but a lot of them do. This guy does. He's good. Good, good man. What else? Question. You had a question. Somebody else? How about you? You have a question? No, I know all these people. They don't have questions. They know all my shit. Well, they, they might have questions like... Huh? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, we, we, we could to the bar to, soon. We could stop talking right now. <laughs> so. Do you do you use the liaison? Do you have a liaison? Do you use that at all? I'm surprised you don't use it. It's pretty. F- they they can hook you up. Yeah. So. Oh, I know something. That, I got something I can ask you. Tell me tell me the Jimmy Buffett story. Which one? About uh, how you couldn't bring the 4,000 down there because you couldn't fit it in the VW Bug or whatever. Yeah, well, so we went to do... Uh, an artist said, do you want to do a record in Key West? He's like, we can mix it at your studio. We can mix it in Key... How fuck yeah, I'm going to Key West, right? So... Um, Vitamin D. Young Daniel uh, loaded a shitload of gear. You know, so... Every once in a while, it's really good to work outside of your comfort zone, right? So they have a great Neve down there, but I knew that the guy I was working with, we were going to have to recall stuff later on. So mixing it through the Neve was not an option. So I ended up just packing up a... What did we pack up? We packed up the two bus, we packed up the... Like a pair of 1176s, the two bus... And I think, yeah, like a Bax EQ and like, like the Mog The Monitor EQ. SC, I think you brought. Or what we yeah, said you wanted. Yeah, the Monitor SC. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, two how did we end up doing? Did we take your second Monitor ST? Yes, Vance's Monitor ST. Oh, we stole yours. Did I ever give that back? The backside of this is that 
I found out I was doing a record there the week after Reed was. And so <laughs> yeah. I called Reed and I said, hey, let's figure this out. So we took my car, loaded it completely right. full of all of his stuff, and then brought my drums, guitar amps and things down so I could do my tracking. And used his Burl rig. Yep. And then uh, I think I used their computer. I don't think I used yours. But yeah. I think it was one of the two. is either my ST or yours or I don't know. I think it was mine. I think, I it, think went it was down. yours, yeah. And so it ended up that Reed was there the first week. And then I got in and then Reed was there. We hung out, went to a bar. Imagine that. Yep. And then the next, and then I started tracking and tracked all week. And then we drove my car all the way back to Nashville. Yep. It was perfect. Sounds great. Especially so, the bar part. So I ended up doing a record with some big famous guy where it was basically being mixed through the dangerous with two external compressors, a couple of channels and Eve on the console. That's it, that all that's all. Turned out fantastic. We got to bring it home, do a few tweaks on it, you know. Obviously everything recalls like that. You know, it was it was perfect and I got to hang out in Key West with Vance, so that was a win. And seasick. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. Love it. Any more questions? Or are we going to button this button this bird up? This is easy. Preguntas for a century. I've waited for a question. Anyone, please help me. You should talk a little bit about this loop trotter stuff because I don't know anything about it, but it looks cool. Huh? Made in Poland. I actually visited the factory in Poland. Yeah. Well, we'll get we'll get a piece in your hands. Okay. Of course, it never comes back is the problem. Yeah. Maybe, but it might go, you know, here, here, somewhere. Oh, no, no, no. Everything that goes to Nashville goes throughout the whole crew. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually talking. So, I, I mean, I've got the Unity Rocks that, that we use all the time, and um, they were saying that they've got these new little small monitors that are really cool, so we want to check Minis. those out, too. Yeah. yeah. Great. Definitely. Okay. Men. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Reed. Thank you. Thank you. For hanging out with us and imparting your wisdom and wit. And we'll see you all in the funnies. Thank you, Eric.